Welcome to the Manufacturing Operator Interface Overview segment of Bloomy's EFT Module for Test and Demo Series. In this video, we will provide a demonstration of how the Manufacturing Operator Interface component of the EFT Module for Test Stand allows manufacturing engineers and test operators to more intuitively select, execute, and debug test stand sequences. The Manufacturing Operator Interface is automatically installed with the EFT Module for Test Stand. It can be launched from the Start Menu Program's Bloomy folder, or also by clicking on the desktop shortcut. When it launches, you must first log in with a valid test stand login. By default, username administrator and an empty password. The first thing you'll see is the sequence loading screen. The manufacturing operator interface is designed with manufacturing operators in mind, so it makes loading and executing a test sequence very easy. It's UUT part number driven instead of sequence file driven. This means that instead of requiring operators to click File Open and browsing Windows Explorer for the correct test sequence file, they simply need to click Load Test, select the desired part from a drop-down menu, and the operator interface automatically selects the appropriate test sequence, verifies the ITA, and allows them to continue testing. If they happen to have an incorrect ITA attached, when they click Start Test, the operator interface will prompt them telling them which ITA is attached and which is required. By reattaching the correct ITA, scanning again, this allows them to continue testing. Once the test starts running, the operator interface follows the standard execution of a test stand sequence. The operator can enter the serial number and the trace execution is shown, which provides details on the steps being executed. The operator interface also provides an overall elapsed time indicator progress bar and allows developers to inject images onto the screen so that the operators can see what is going on with the test sequence. When the test is done, the operator interface shows the standard test and results files. The operator can then either restart the test or click new test to run a different UUT. Users with a login level of technician or greater may also take advantage of the debug features of the operator interface. In order to do so, they can load their test sequence, then click the debug sequence button. This takes them to a page which allows them to look into individual subsequences, set breakpoints, and select individual test sequences to run. When the test executes in debug mode, users are also given more information about the state of execution, including the test threads, call stacks, and information about the current state of variables, including real-time updates of variable values. They are also now able to single step through the test sequence. They can step over individual steps, and they can step into subsequences, step over other sequences, and step out back to the main sequence when ready. They can even interactively jump back and forth within a test sequence. When they're done, they can click the resume button and execute the rest of their test. When they're done, they can click the exit debug button and return back to the home screen. In order to define the UUTs, test sequences, and ITAs in which can be run together, Users with an administrator login can use the test manager by clicking on Setup, Manage Tests. This utility allows administrators to define the test sequences, units under test, and ITAs in the test system, then link them together as a configuration. Let's start by first defining the test sequence that we would like to run. I click on Manage Sequences and add a new test sequence. I'll give it a name, Example Sequence. I can then point it to the sequence file path that I would like to use. In this case, I will point it to the UUT test files, tests, half demo, half demo sequence file that we created in a previous video. I hit save and exit, and you can now see that our example sequence is set up in our test manager. I can do the same thing by adding a new UUT. I click on manage UUTs and add and type in the part number. Our example part number would be example one, two, three. I give the part a name, which will be example UUT, and I can assign an image to the part so that the operator can see what they are about to test. I click on the browse file dialog and choose an image of a particular UUT. I can save and exit this and now manage my ITAs. 
I can add a new ITA, which I'll give the name example fixture, assign an ITA electronic ID to this fixture, three, and then point it also to an image. I can save and exit this and now create my configuration that links these three together. So I'll add a new configuration, call it example config, and then I can double click on my example sequence, example part number, and example fixture to link them together, which you can see by these checkboxes. When I click save and exit, my new UUT is now available in the drop-down box. When I select it, I can now see an image of the unit under test, the operator interface loads the appropriate test sequence, and it's now prompting me for my new fixture. When I attach that new fixture and scan again, I can now start testing that new part. Although I'm currently using simulated ITA IDs because I don't have any hardware attached, in most situations, you'll want to configure the operator interface to measure the actual electronic ID of your ITAs. In order to set this up, administrators can return to the test management utility, click on the manage ITAs, and then the configure measurement button. This brings up the ITA measurement administrator. There are several methods for measuring the ID of an ITA, including via DAC analog input, where each one volt increment is an ID of one, by resistance measurement through a switched DMM, where each one K ohm increment is an ID of one, via DAC digital inputs as a binary measurement, and there's also a special measurement type for Bloomy's Compact UTS. When you've selected your appropriate measurement type, you can save and exit, and return back to the sequence loading screen. Administrators may also configure a few more options of the operator interface by choosing Setup, Configure OI. Here they can change the banner logo, update the banner title, and subtitle, or set the subtitle to the PC name. They can also specify whether or not simulated ITA IDs are allowed, and specify a part number regular expression for parsing the part number out of a barcode string. They can also specify some common test and station options, including whether or not test sequences should stop after the first failure, if breakpoints are allowed when running in non-debug mode, if the trace execution is allowed to step into subsequences even if they are set to disable tracing, and whether or not the trace execution shows the setup and cleanup steps. Once all of the settings are configured, click the Exit Config button to return to the home screen. Because many of the features like debug and configuration are user log independent, the manufacturing OI has an integrated test and user manager available to administrators. It can be used by selecting Setup, User Manager. Here, administrators can add, remove, and edit users. Each user can be given a username, a login level, including operator, technician, developer, and administrator, each with its own privileges, and a password, which may be left blank. When we return to the operator interface and log in with our new username and password, You'll see that the debug button goes away and we can no longer set up the tests or configure the operator interface. This is the standard mode that most operators will run in and limits their access to simply loading and executing test sequences. For more assistance with the manufacturing operator interface, the user manual provides detailed instructions on loading and executing, debugging, managing tests, and managing users. It even includes a flowchart that describes the details of how tests are loaded and executed with Test Stand. Make sure to check out our other videos on the EFT module for Test Stand, including an overview and advanced topics with the hardware access framework, and an overview of the database reporting plugin, all available at bloomy.com.